Old stomping grounds. <laughs> Hank Patterson, fly fishing guide. Riley Smith, tight end. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, you wouldn't happen to be the kicker. No, tight end. Again, thank you. I'm looking for a kicker for Lithia Ford's fall kickoff sale. But you're not the kicker. No. Yeah. Now nah, the kicker's probably taller and in a lot better shape. So, okay. What uh, position do you play? Tight end. Squats. Yeah. Try it sometime. RowPaint.com, the official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics, is going all in this season with an all-star lineup. First up, he led the Broncos to three conference championships and ten 20-win seasons. It's Coach Leon Rice. Next, he's the founder and CEO of RowPaint.com. He played a little basketball in high school on the driveway with his mom. It's Andy Rowe. Oh, no. Want to just paint my house? Now that I can do. When I want Boise State to win, I trust Coach Rice to lead the Broncos to victory. And when I want the best painting and garage floor coating, I trust RowPaint.com to get that job done right. is Bronco Nation News Live. The best interviews, the most informed opinions, the latest breaking news, all from the top Boise State insiders. Today's broadcast is coming from the Cutwater Spirits Can Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Can Cocktails is perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Now, here's four-time NSMA Idaho Sports Writer of the Year, BJ Rains, with another edition of Bronco Nation News Live. What's up, Bronco Nation? Welcome back to the Riley and Rich Show. As always, we're excited and, and we're happy for you guys to join us to talk some football. Leave uh, questions and comments and we'll get to them as fast as possible and give you guys as much experience and information as we have. I'm Riley Smith, former Boise State tight end. And the Rid side of the show, he's getting older and struggling with uh, technology. So he's having technical difficulties, but he'll get in and join us eventually. And uh, we got a great special guest again for you guys three weeks in a row, and this is Joel Snyder. And I don't even know what to say is your title. You're just a jack of all trades. If you have a problem, you go to Joel, and he gives you the solution, or he finds it some way, works his magic. But he did operations for the Boise State football team for a long time, and now he's an entrepreneur out in the Boise community killing it, and he's going to give us a lot of background information on the day-to-day -day of uh, how a how a college D1 football team works. So welcome, Joel. We appreciate your time, and we're excited for you to be here. Yeah, Riley, thank you for having me. Obviously, I wish I could fix Rid's computer right now. So we can make <laughs> yeah, sure. you're the guy to go to. I know. I used to do it all the time for him back in the day, but <laughs> he needs uh, he needs me to get over here. So yeah, he can get no, in doubt. There. Um, no doubt. But yeah, man, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm uh, honored to be on the show. Obviously, you guys have had some great guests, so I don't know if I stack up with those guys, but um dj and winston okay. brought it the last couple of weeks so i'm excited okay. to be on here there he is there he is there he is oh. <laughs> <laughs> figuring it out but yeah no we're fired up we uh you hit us up uh 
after Winston's show and we were like, dude, we need to give the people what they want and bring Joel Schneider on and give all the ins and outs of football because what you guys don't see, it's, it's insane, it's stressful, and there's a lot that goes on, and uh, Joel's always the guy that, that handles that stuff. So it's pretty cool to, to have you on. Well, I'm, I'm excited to be on. Maybe we can tell some good stories and fill Bronco Nation in on uh, what goes on behind the scenes, which is a lot more than people probably think, you know, especially right now, spring ball, it's crazy. It's probably it's probably the busiest month, you know, spring. Everyone yeah. thinks off season, but spring ball, it's it's a lot. A lot a week, right. Yeah. What, why, don't you, why don't you give everybody a little bit of uh, like all the different things going on this week is kind of lead up to the spring game. Yeah, I mean, spring is like you're trying to shove recruiting, football, uh, all your community engagements. You still got school going on. So there's a lot There's a lot going on with the facility, right? And everybody wants a tour. You don't want to give them a tour during the season. So you naturally say, hey, hit us up in March, April, May. And then they sure do. They hit you up March, April, May. So they're trying to get a tour of the facility. But this week, in particular, I, I just remember getting through spring break and being like, okay, the next two weeks are going to be real because it's it's going to be spring game, coaches clinic. This week alone, you're going to have coaches clinic, spring game, Green Iron Social, so all the alumni are coming back. You got a golf tournament probably with the alumni. Then you got a, all the alumni coming back that want to watch practice, want to talk to the team. You got NFL guys in town. You got uh, recruits coming through. You got junior day. You probably have some unofficials, maybe official visits. So you're trying to do all – you're juggling, right? You're juggling everything. But you also have a big spring game where people are trying to come and you're trying to put your guys on the field to make sure that they're successful too. So it's a lot to juggle. You probably have – depending on the rules, year to year that changes, but you probably have yeah. some of your, your signees that are coming to get physicals around the yeah. spring game. So you got guys that sign that might be coming up, depending on if they can come or not. It just depends – what the NCAA wants to do year to year. Um, and Rid knows what that's like, but you got a lot, you got a lot going on. And then it's like, Hey, spring games on Saturday. And then Monday you're on the road recruiting. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like you're taking a break. It's like, Hey, welcome to transfer portals here. And then you got to recruit your roster. You got to make sure you keep guys and then you got to go out and get guys too. And so um, it doesn't really slow down and, it's a it's a crazy time of the year and all of those logistics, you know, all those people in the building right now, coaches are working on spring game plan, what they're gonna call in the scrimmage. All the people behind the scenes are working on where is this person gonna be at this time? Where is this group gonna be at this time? How are we gonna have 40 different groups going on when we only have 10 different people? And so uh, that's gonna be that's definitely gonna be uh, the challenge for those guys and then getting the coaches ready to go out on the road. So Joel, uh, I apologize for being late. I the camera keeps cutting in and out, so if you lose me for a second, I'll be right back. But um, but uh, why don't you just tell us a little bit about you know kind of what your role? Uh, Joel's a lifetime Bronco. We'll just say that. Uh, but just talk maybe about your role, like the last couple years. You were the chief of staff. You were the director of football operations. Like what what goes into those roles? Because uh, I don't. I think people kind of generally know who the assistants are, the head coach, obviously, you yeah. know, maybe even some of the recruiting guys from social media, but, you know, you obviously held one of the most important roles uh, that kind of held everybody together. And I heard Riley say it earlier, but you got a problem, you got to see Joel, he'll fix it, like whatever. Um, you know, talk a little bit about what those roles are. Um, obviously, because we appreciate you, but hopefully people can appreciate all the stuff going on behind the scenes with some of that. Yeah, yeah it's probably, I mean, it's probably hard to appreciate because you don't, you just don't see it and you don't know about it. But, you know, right now I know they got a chief of staff that's in there right now. And so chief of staff and the director of football operations. So those two positions really kind of run the facility. So they keep everything going. The chief of staff really helps the head coach with planning hiring staff, kind of the liaison between the, you know, Jeremiah Dickey and then the football coach. So like while things are going on, that person can be rolling, ready to deal with staff, deal with everything that's going on. And then um, 
the football operations side, they're really planning the logistics, the schedules daily, making sure that the fields are ready to roll. Schedules are good. No one when the guys are going to eat. I mean, Riley, when you were here, you probably woke up every single day and knew exactly what your schedule was. And yeah. there's somebody in there that's doing that. You know, it's not like that just happens randomly. There's yeah. there's like me in there just making sure, hey, so now the team works, make sure everyone knows the schedule for tomorrow and then, you know, planning the schedule for the next couple months ahead of time. And so you're making sure that everything's running smooth. And then really in the off season, the operations people are looking for the season. They're they're going on site visits, they're traveling to the you know, where the team's gonna play this year. So, you know, probably making a trip over to Eugene here in here in a couple of weeks just to check out yeah. the hotel, check out the stadium, what's our route gonna be. Cause you know, you have 12 games a year, you know, 12 games a year where the boys got to show out. And so you got to make sure that everything's smooth when they get there. And so, you know, you put in all that work all is, year. Right. You, what's that? To the, the number is for you, but like yeah. to the team, like they don't notice anything. Like everything's right. always great because, yeah. but behind the scenes, you guys are freaking going nuts. Out there. <laughs> yeah. My- <laughs> My goal was like when a player gets off the plane, they know exactly where to go. And then when they got off the bus, they know exactly where to go. And so like they don't have to think. They just literally grab their key card. They go into their room. They come down for chapel, grab some coffee, grab a water. Like, you know, the whole plan is is done and, and they don't have to think. And so you really got to put yourself in a player's shoes and be like, you know, what do I need when I'm there for 48 hours? What do I need? And so making sure that that stuff's all dialed is going to be uh, really important. And so that's what, you know, operation staff spend a lot of time in the off season doing, but they got to do that in combination with everything else that's going on in the off season. And so it, it adds up for sure. But that's really the operations side of it, right? That's not yeah. even the chief of staff side where you're, you're managing NIL, you're managing, uh, Right. staff you're managing i mean really like everything right yeah because like operationally you're problem solving in the future chief of staff you're almost problem solving every day right you're the go-to yeah. for everybody so the head coach needs something they go to you if the players need something they probably go to you if coaches need something they go to you if somebody's got a question they go to you so you're just handling everything that's going on in the building so as, as ahead of everything you can be you're going to be better off but then also, you know, as things come up in college athletics, you got 195 people in that building on a daily basis, something's going to happen. And so being yeah. able to make sure that you're able to adjust and adapt. And, you know, if you're if you're good, which most people that work in college athletics are now, you don't go to the coach with like, here's our problem. Help me fix it. You go to the coach with here's our problem. Here's everything I did to fix it. Like, yeah. what, what do you want to do? You know, so you got to come with solutions, not problems definitely and, and i think dayton poses a great question i mean a lot of people don't realize that boise state football is like a corporation like you're right. running the operations not just for us to play good football but like you said you're doing the nil marketing you're recruiting employees you're, you're trying to make our our business the best it can be and and that never goes smoothly as you know and We've talked about it a lot, and Dayton asked, how many times do your plans have to pivot? <laughs> and you can answer that. Well. You can answer this twice, once during COVID and once like now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, during COVID, I can't tell you how many different COVID plans I had to make. I probably had like version like 87 before we even got to June, and we got shut down in March. It was like every single, like three times a day, right? Yeah, every every day, Harse Harse would call me and be like, "Hey, we got to get a plan ready for next week." And be like, "Dude, we're not coming back for a little bit." So, <laughs> you know, it's like, but you got to have a plan. You got to be ready. And so, I don't blame him. It's like, hey, if we're coming back, if the guys are are here, we better be ready for it. And so, yeah, you got to pivot all the time. COVID was a whole different ball game. Like, you know, we're seating people literally like hour by hour planning. Yeah. I mean, you're, was, you're trying to, I mean, you know, Riley, we're trying to put people in different rooms spaced out. And then, yeah. Team meetings know, in the stadium seats. If you're, if you're the starting quarterback, you're probably sharing a room with like the third string wide receivers so that if like one of you yeah. gets sick, you're not taking out somebody that's like a, a starter. Right. And so, you know, it's just crazy the logistics in COVID, but 
on a on a on now you know you probably pivot daily anyways but if you're ahead of it you probably just it's a lot easier to pivot you know i think there's been i think i i felt like i was cursed a little bit going through it as an ops guy like i got the 2018 first responder bowl then i go yeah. into the 2019 florida state game that gets changed like last minute because of a hurricane you know, then you got a canceled bowl game in Tucson. Joel helped bring the W home that weekend, uh, yeah. getting everything done. It, yeah. it, literally, like people have no idea that that might be something literally to to talk about, Joel. Like how how much of a obviously that was a unique weekend, but you know, just start a little bit like with the planning to go on that trip, and then uh, yeah, uh, you know, kind of how it finished. Well, it was supposed to be a really cool supposed to be a really cool trip right Riley like you're from Florida you're probably fired oh, yeah. up like um playing the Jack know, Stadium I was supposed fired to play up. in Jacksonville yeah I was supposed to play in Jacksonville and like so I'm I'll, I fly down a day early before the team and then if we do an east coast trip we always fly two days ahead right so if we're gonna play yeah. Saturday we always put fly Thursday so we can get acclimated to the time change and everything. thankfully we did on this one right yeah thank thankfully we got to practice in high school too. That was that was yeah. sweet. at your high school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, compliance is there. Make sure everything is <laughs> yeah. up there. Yeah, but we we are supposed to fly on Thursday. I was there Wednesday, so I I just finished setting up the truck. Hurricanes trying to roll in, and so uh, we get a call, and it's like um, they're like, "Hey, we're gonna move the game to Tallahassee because that's farther inland. It's not gonna affect the hurricane's not gonna affect it as bad as Jacksonville." So we're going to move the game to Tallahassee, but we're going to move it up to Saturday at one o'clock. And I think it was supposed to be a night game, like seven o'clock or something like that. And so I think, was it, maybe it was noon. It might've been even earlier. It was a pretty early. Yeah, we played it noon. yeah I think noon. so. Yeah. So the plane's supposed to leave in an hour to fly into Jacksonville and we're going to move the game to Tallahassee. And I got the whole hotel set up in Jacksonville. And so, you know, admins like, hey, we're going to change course. We're going to fly into Tallahassee. And I was like, well, if you fly into Tallahassee, no one's going to be able to pick you up. You know, like I'm in Jacksonville. I, I'll barely get to Tallahassee before you guys get uh, on the ground, let alone get a hotel set up. So it was a little chaotic. You know, we had the team fly into Jacksonville. While they were in the air, I was booking a hotel in Tallahassee for the next night so that we could travel the next day on a bus from Jacksonville to Tallahassee stay in a hotel what people don't understand is when you have 200 people travel on a trip you got to feed all those people and so we didn't have any food set up at the tallahassee hotel plus uh football meals are pretty specific so it's like you got to have the right stuff so it's like talking the one hotel into transporting the food over to the other hotel in tallahassee but it's got to be done in a proper way so that hotel can accept it you know all that stuff and so yeah yeah it was pretty crazy and um i just remember that game we came out to a slow start and i was like god like i don't know what else i could have done to you know get us to where we needed to be but uh the guys the guys played, and that's what's always cool it was, it's really not about the operations like that that really helps but it's really cool when the guys go out and play and and that was a fun game to be a part of because you know it's it ended up being cool you're in tallahassee you get to see you know the entrance and everyone stops and they put the spear in the in the 50 yard line and like it was pretty cool so it was a good a good experience but it was definitely a little bit unique for sure so plans yeah. change and driving in down like riley you were on that trip like that was just such a you know i don't think the players probably felt like it was that big a deal other than maybe one extra bus ride like yeah yeah whatever you know, but uh, the the guys on the staff, we certainly got to see what was going on behind the scenes, and and uh, you know, we had text messages here and there, like, so you know, like these guys are doing it, and we wouldn't have been able to play that game uh, there if we didn't have somebody on the ground like that knew what they were doing and how to handle it, and I mean, really, everybody that was playing or coaching in the game really felt like. Yeah, I mean, this is a normal road trip and no big deal. So, uh, it, yeah, it honestly I mean, felt like it didn't skip a beat, which is crazy because all that went on and and like Dayton asked another good question, like how are, 
pivoting for five people is one thing, but 200 people is crazy. And <laughs> like we, we didn't notice anything. And I mean, I think the only thing that changed from a reg regular game besides the bus trip was that the, the plane was still in Jacksonville. So after the game, usually we're out of the locker room and we're in the air within like an hour. And then yeah. this time it's like five o'clock and we're still in Tallahassee. And honestly, that was the best thing that could have happened for me because all of my boys went to awesome. FSU. We're, yeah. And we're, we got to hang out as yeah. a team, watch games together. Uh, yeah. I mean, it really makes you think like maybe we should do that more often. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm with that. I mean, after, after a win, that sounds great, right? After a win, that sounds great. No, nope. That's where – I was stressing. What goes do we win, right? So. Yeah, exactly. You're stressing out though. If you're me, you're like, man, if we lose this game, it's gonna be a rough six hours waiting for this plane. So no doubt, um, no doubt. Yeah, no, I think that's that's great. That call, by the way, uh, Dayton asked that question. It was interesting because Florida State knew we had to move the game, so Florida State got really involved in helping, which was really nice, right? So they have hotel. Um, in Tallahassee that they're affiliated with. So they're calling them, helping breach that conversation for me. So I didn't have to like just call the hotel randomly and be like, hey, we need 200 rooms, you know. And so um, that definitely helped um, get that done. We had to split up between a couple of different hotels. I think we just had like the team at one hotel and then support staff at another one. But we were able to get all the, all the players and the main coaches um, at that same hotel, which was great. That's awesome. This question by Eric's funny. It's uh, because this was the first like time I switched from like quarterback to tight end. Like I think this was the first time I stepped on the field, and um, it was pretty crazy because at the time I was doing signals, so I was on the sideline and tanks in the game, and I'm doing all these signals, and like we have a personnel that it was like Falcon three or Pony three at the time, or and so if that went up, I have to hurry, find my helmet find my gloves, run in, be ready. And, um, and yeah, that was brutal. Cause I was mid play call and then looked over and realized that I'm supposed to be in the game. I'm sprinting on, putting my gloves <laughs> on. There. We got it. it out and then ran, I think I was just running like a clear out route to the middle and the linebacker ran with me and jacked me up. And I was like, <laughs> all right, this, is, I'm, this isn't quarterback anymore. This is welcome to the TV. That was, that was crazy though. But good time for sure to be able to get my first snaps in uh in my home state so that was pretty dope absolutely absolutely and well deserved too so uh joel one of the other questions came in though uh was so for georgia southern next year like when's the when does the planning start on that um i mean honestly you probably you probably don't start planning on it until midsummer or well um, I'm thinking like a coach right now, so I got to put on my ops. So you've already booked, you've already booked the hotel, right? So like, um, typically last October, I'm reaching out to the hotel for this next season. So you're about ten to eleven months ahead. You don't know the Mountain West schedule yet until uh, typically around the Mountain West tournament, right? So Mountain West basketball tournament, you find out the Mountain West schedule, but your ops, your um, your non-conference games, you can schedule out um, pretty far because you know when they are. So last year in October, I would have scheduled Georgia Southern and Eugene um, to go to Oregon. I can't – I don't know where else they're traveling this non-conference. I think that might be the only two, but – Washington um, State maybe? Or, no, maybe. Washington State and Oregon State are both here. Yeah. They're both here. So, might yeah, so, so your non-conference, you're way out ahead with the hotels because you want to make sure you get the best hotel – um, or at least bid the hotels out. You may not go see them yet, but you want to bid them out and start getting those conversations done because you're trying to get the best price, but, you know, try to meet the budget, but also make sure that you have what you need. Some places you, you literally have like one option, right? Yeah. Like Eugene, there's not a lot of hotels. I think there's like the graduate and then the um, the place we stayed, right? Valley River Inn. Yeah. Valley River Inn. So there's not, there's not a whole lot of options. And then it, there's no options in Corvallis. So if there's, a game in both places, they're kind of screwed because you're all sharing hotels, right? So you got to kind of get out there pretty early and make sure that you're you're good. So Georgia Southern, you're already planning. You're probably going to go take a site visit there, um, your ops person. So, you know, I think probably Keaton or Charlotte uh, for the staff right now, they're probably flying over there in May. 
and you're going to go check out the hotel. You're probably going over there two days early, so you're going to practice on a Friday. So you're going to go check out the stadium that you're going to practice at or a high school or something like that. Try to figure out um, you're just – everything that's going into it because your conference games you kind of go year to year and you know you, if you've done it for a little bit you know what it looks like but your non-conference if you've never been there like i've never been to georgia southern so i'd want to see it so i make sure that i can know that way if but something does know, happen you know how to handle question it. coming in uh can't imagine a lot of hotels in statesboro i think typically the teams stay in uh savannah georgia i believe and oh. uh, you drive out there on game day because i think there are no options in Statesboro. <laughs> yeah, probably not. Yeah, no, I've that's, never. That's the other thing, right? I mean, the hotels have to. It's not just yeah. how many rooms you have. Right. Yeah, you got to have conference space. You got to have the rooms so that the team can eat, can meet. You know, it's not like you can just get a hotel. Um, like even Boise, there's a lot of hotels, but there's very limited hotels that has the meeting space that you need um, to be able to to do it. And so it's very limited. Depending on where you go, you know, it's very limited on on where you're going to get it. So yeah, that that prep's already started, and then over the summer, that's really where you're kind of finalizing that stuff, getting ready, and then trying to figure out logistics. Obviously, with like a Southern game, you're going two days early. You're trying to figure out time change when you're gonna, when you want to leave. What's best for the players? You're working with the dietitian to talk about food. Seventy two hours before the game, you're working with. Um, you know the coach like hey when are we going to do our internal practice because we got to get these guys in the humidity a little bit so that when they get down there it's not like such a shock because if you've never been if you're from you know somewhere that's never been down there it's a little bit different um, oh yeah. yeah those are fun yeah the, yeah shut the indoor heat it up spray you yeah. when you come in get you a little human so on. yeah it's all on but I think that stuff does help, you know. I think it helps train those guys so it's like it's not it's not exactly what they'll feel when they get down there. But you know, we've had some good success when um I Rid, you remember that Lafayette game? Yes, I do. Sorry, <laughs> just laughing. Uh Davis Cutter joining the show. <laughs> I love you, Davis. <laughs> the best GA in the country right now is Davis oh, yeah. Cutter. Quarterback. You know, I was Oh, she was coaching me for tight ends. He's no doubt. He's a GA down there in Texas for the tight end. So, if you need help? Let let me know. He's got that playoff pedigree now. He doesn't have to worry about Absolutely. it. Absolutely, no doubt. We'll see, we'll see him in the playoffs. Well, hopefully, he gets a national championship this year. If the Broncos oh, yeah. don't, yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the inferno practices last week with DJ and Riley, and um, the the problem with the sauna is like you can crank up the heat as as high as you can, but there's no humidity, right? So, you know, adding water into that mix uh, changes everything. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, BJ's asked <laughs> what are the plane issues after again. I mean, the reality of it is there's nothing you can do about it. It's a plane issue. Like it's a safety issue. We've all been a part of it. Yeah, that sucks. Whether it's a win, loss, whatever, you're getting back later. But you know, at the end of the day, you just gotta deal with it because you're not changing it. Yeah. yeah. I gotta, remember Colorado State when it was was it Colorado State or Wyoming? It was, it was one of snowing. the two. And it was, Colorado State snow. Yeah, it yeah. was snowing outside, so we're miserable getting on the plane, and then the plane's just taxing the whole time. And it is hot in there because they couldn't yeah. turn it wait up. For and come, yeah, yeah I had to wait for somebody to come de ice it. Yeah. I mean, the yeah, line we, line yeah. take their shirts off. It's a sweaty mess. That was a nightmare. Yeah, it was, <laughs> was it probably, I think it was two hours of just waiting, you know, because yeah. it took forever for the de and we loaded as soon as the plane pulled up, you know, like we're, yeah, but that's that's where in you're in ops, you're stressed out because. You know, you sit there for two hours and the snow just keeps coming down. And so you call you call the hotel and you're like, listen, if we don't get out of here, we might have to come back. And they're like, what? And you're like, you're like, uh, we got no other option. Like, we can't just not leave. And so you just keep seeing snow coming down. And the flight rep is always like, yeah, I don't know if we're going to make it out of here. And you're like, well, that's that sounds really encouraging. So then you're trying to like. You know, that's the stuff you really haven't planned for is like going back to the hotel. So you're trying to do it while you're on the plane and figure it out. And then 
when you take off and you're in the area, like, okay, I can figure it about that and we can move on to the next the next problem, which is hopefully the bus is waiting for two hours back in Boise to pick us yeah, up. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. The uh yeah. And and sometimes I mean you just gotta deal I don't I don't even know what to say. I mean, there's there's things that are just at the end of the day out of anybody's control and everybody's gotta be good and roll with it. And I think we've all we've all kind of been through that stuff and yeah, yeah everybody handles it and yeah some people are more more upset than others and whatever but at the end of the day nobody's blaming anybody it just is what it is and yeah it's always everything's worse after a loss yeah. the food tastes worse the yeah. the 30 minute delay is like three hours i mean at the end of the day like after a loss it's all it's all bad it doesn't yeah. matter Nothing's good after a loss, so it's like as as much as can go right after a loss is what you want. But the whole yeah. next week sucks no matter what, so yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah, and I think that's just a testament to like the team, right, Riley? Like you, we're all in it together. We're all trying to go, so everyone feels the same way if that happens. Yep. And one thing that's really cool about my experience with Boise State was the players and the coaches just being first class. You know, we we would take care of everything that we did. And so it didn't matter if it was a loss or a win. Those guys are cleaning the flight, cleaning the bus, making sure that the stuff's clean. You know, it's not like uh, one of those teams that's just trashing stuff and leaving it behind, you know, yeah. messy. And it doesn't matter if it's a win or a loss. And that's what I really appreciate about Boise State as I would get so many compliments from hotel reps, bus reps, flight reps. So they'd be like, man, you guys are the best team we've ever had. And that wasn't because of me. That was because of, the team right because they were taking care of the people and making sure they said thank you and just being respectful and so that's one thing i really appreciated i did a lot of professional development at bigger schools and that's a lot of times what people would have complaints about that were on staff there is just like the guys didn't take care of the facility or or the travel like they needed to and, and that's why i love being a bronco man because um if you're in that facility you bleed blue and you know what it means to be blue collar and you know what it means to you know how be a man of character and so that's what i really love being a part of the broncos no doubt. i think and that's like one thing Ritz too it's talking about when stuff's not going good it's some cool like being a bronco that they always talk about like embracing the suck and like even when we're on that hot ass plane just miserable we found a way to like have fun and like enjoy it like we were playing games and doing a bunch of different stuff to pass time and it ended up being like a bonding experience and then we kind of carried that with us throughout the rest of the season and so it's pretty cool to see like you said like the guys on the team make the most out of bad situations and then when stuff does go seamlessly or when we are at the hotel and just picking up trash and trying to make it easy on other people so you're right it being a part of Boise State, and that's gone way back. That's been the standards. So say, yeah, that goes back. I mean, 2001, I remember Coach Hawk, you know, kind of preaching there's two types of class, first and no. And I think that's that's kind of continued on as long as I've, I've been around. I assume it's still going. But, you know, yeah. you either act first class or you have no class, one, one of the two. And, uh, you know, it's – I think that's something special about Boise State. When people understand it. Joel, I want to talk about a uh, a job title that probably nobody knows that you uh, took it over, but um, the original one was Taylor Tharp. But you, as the commissioner for the Bronco <laughs> Olympic, yeah, give us some as much detail as we can. I mean, I know it's kind of our tradition and something we do for fun, yeah. but like, how yeah. is that? difficult having a bunch of competitive guys doing all these different games over the summer and complaining <laughs> to you all the time about the scoring system so yeah bronco olympics best thing man it's like the bonding and uh basically the coaches would draft draft players so that they would be on their teams and that'll never be released publicly that's just something internal which is really cool because uh, mm -hmm. it's it's for you guys right it's for the players it's for the coaches to be connected and and kind of build um that bond throughout fall camp so that you guys have that for the rest of your lives. I mean, you guys will tell Bronco Olympic stories forever. I guarantee it. Like yeah. every time I get back with different players, they're like, yeah, Bronco Olympics. Team 10. Yeah. Team 10. 
Yeah, you'll never forget it. I mean, the skits yeah. that you guys would do and just the, the games and the competing. And so, you know, I think shout out to Taylor Tharp. That guy did a stellar job of being a commissioner because he would come in with different um, <clears throat> costumes and personalities. Yeah. And, you know, so he was he was incredible. music in the background. Yeah, he was, he was good. So I knew when I came in, I had to follow that up. And so uh one thing i think i had an edge because no one ever saw that i could do that and so oh yeah i think when i did it i would shock some people <laughs> and so that was always cool um you know if i could do my opening monologues and have some jokes in there yeah. you know some of the guys and i got like a shout out live monologue you killed yeah, it. exactly so <laughs> um i remember man like my guy uh andrew walker he would help me with the skits um and he would he would do all like <laughs> for like two weeks this guy he would just write jokes for me and be like hey like, he's like you should use this and i'm like andrew if i say that i don't know if i can come back like <laughs> my, you know i gotta keep my job so yeah but so that, you had a that ghost was, writer. yeah had a ghost ghost writer. And I, i'll shout him out all day every day man because that guy he's hilarious he, He's an awesome dude and, and just so funny, but also so great and uh, miss him dearly. But he was like, he was definitely the guy behind me uh, helping me get some funny material out there. But I remember you guys just yelling at me all the time, like constantly. <laughs> if, if I made a decision on a ruling, because, you know, you'd have to officiate the games. You'd have 10 competitive dudes in your face yelling at you that you made the mistake. Plus yeah. coaches. Plus coaches, yeah. yeah. I know I was one of them. <laughs> yeah. so, but then if you changed your mind, it was worse from the other team. So you couldn't <laughs> – I knew that. I was like, you can't change your mind, even if you're wrong. So I learned yeah. what it was like to be an official, right? Like, I, I yeah. made the wrong call, but I'm not changing my mind because then it will be even worse. So um, you guys definitely – that's what's great about you guys. Like, you guys don't miss anything. You're super smart. Everyone's like so good at just being competitive and catching on. I love that energy, you know. And so, like running those games, I I got into it. I loved it. Um, I had a lot of other stuff going on, so I was trying to like be fun and be happy, but also like yeah. I had some other stressed crap going on. Stressed about schedule changes <laughs> and whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's like here. <laughs> you're, you're stressed all day, and then you get to Bronco Olympics. You're like, for 15 minutes, I get to let loose and just have a good time. And like, uh, yeah. no one can mess with me because I got to do this for the boys. And then you got to move on. Right. And so, yeah, Bronco Olympics were a great time. And uh, yeah. I'll, I probably miss Bronco Olympics almost more than I miss anything that I did at Boise mm -hmm. State. I'll be honest. Yeah. It's almost. amazing. And it's yeah. during fall camp, too. So it's one of the like most brutal times of the year. And that's kind of falls back on us saying we're embracing the suck and just finding ways to enjoy it and get closer through the difficult times. And whoever came up with the Bronco Olympics was genius because you're right. It, it builds the competitive nature, but it also brings us all together. And um, yeah, it was a great time. And I'm sure you had a lot of guys bribing you on the side and um, stuff like that. Great I know I saw never you never on. Never accepted bribes. Never accepted. <laughs> never yeah. accepted them. But you got, you got a lot of people trying, right? Like yeah. Riley, if I saw you on, <laughs> you try to kill saw me. You on like the ruling day, I was just extra nice to you. I was yeah. you that's what fight. I was about to say. Riley just killed me with kindness. He's like, hey, <laughs> you know, you and actually the other Riley, Riley Wimpy, do the same thing. Riley Wimpy yeah. come in there and be like, hey, Joel. Is, is <laughs> like, Shut up, Riley. Like, I know what you're trying to do. Yeah, but, yeah right. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, everybody was going to – gonna pale in comparison to whatever David McKenzie pulled out anyway. So it, it really didn't matter. Bronco, <laughs> Bronco Olympic legend. Uh, yeah. awesome. Hey, I know we're under a little bit of a con time constraint. Riley's got some uh, onboarding for the, for the new gig he's got to take care of. So we'll, we'll just hit, kind of finish with two thoughts. I think BJ's question here uh, would be, would be the first one. And then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about tomorrow, but uh Ken Griffey Jr. was at practice today. Most famous person to attend practice or visit the facility. I would certainly say that's up there. I mean, uh, I can't think of a – Jay Tusk, you know, was probably uh, hanging like two feet from him the whole time, hoping to hoping to get some DNA off him, something, you know, like uh, whatever. But – And <laughs> shoot, I think we all, we all should be like that, right? Yeah. I mean, God, that guy – 
freaking one of the best what baseball players of all time uh and certainly a tremendous athlete probably could have done a lot of other things um but we were pretty fortunate had some other guys i'll let you guys you know uh answer that i think think a couple I mean, one of the coolest I saw was uh, Zabransky coming out because I was I was freshman quarterback, and in my eyes, just watching him and everything he did, like when I was growing up. Nobody loves that answer more than Z, huh? Nobody loves that answer more than Z. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure he loves. (laughs) I was like, I was like, this is insane because that was the time like. I remember me and my dad, because he's a Boise guy, we would stay up late watching some of those games. And so being able to see him and he was talking to the quarterbacks, that was that was dope for me. That was an awesome experience. Yeah, for me, Absolutely. Rid's probably seen more than me, but you yeah. know, we were blessed to have, you know, talk or uh, extra mile arena right next door, right? So then you got country artists coming over and checking it out and you know, a lot of different you know, musicians and things like that. So that's pr- pretty cool to meet them. I do want to shout, like, we did have, uh, it wasn't at the facility, but we had Ronnie Lott come to a team meeting one time in San Jose, and that was pretty cool. That was probably a highlight for me. Oh, I remember. That was sick. Yeah. And so for me, it was probably Ronnie Lott, just being a Niners fan and uh, getting to see him talk to the team. And, like, dude, that guy's passion at his age still feel like he could take the field and be ready to knock somebody out. So that was pretty cool. Without question. And we, we had Bo Jackson. That's what I was uh, thinking. Yeah. You know, I think that that was tremendous. Um, uh, Daryl Strawberry came through there. I was trying to find my picture of me and Daryl, Daryl Strawberry. Um, like you said, the country artist, you know, Garth Brooks was around for like a week. Right. Uh Took over, the, took over room. the locker room. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, so I think we're, we're just very fortunate that a lot of those guys, um, you know, really come through and, and want to see it. Jimmy Buffett uh, was was on the blue. Um, you know, I, yeah, very, very, very fortunate. But um, all those guys, whenever they got the chance to talk to the team, were all about it. Uh, love doing it, you know. Yeah, uh, Russell Wilson. We had Russell Wilson in there. Yeah. 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 Uh, Luke, Sorry, Z, you're Luke. falling down the list. <laughs> <laughs> Luke Keekley, uh yeah. came through. Like, and some of these guys just are like they're kind of rolling through, kind of randomly. It's not even like they're not. Uh, yeah. You know, like calling up and saying, "Hey, can I come by?" I mean, they're. They're literally like just in town and they roll by the facility. And the next thing you know, you're like standing there talking to one of these guys. And I mean, hey, yeah. hey the offensive coordinator is Dirt Cutter. And then you got, yeah. you got yeah. Chuck Pagano standing on the sideline. And then, yeah, uh, Chuck was over at practice. Chris, Chris Strasser. With, with a true legend, I saw a picture of Dirt, Chuck, and the actual legend, uh, Scott Butterfield. So, you want to talk about the real commissioner sometime, Riley? We'll talk to you about <laughs> Mr. Oh, <Butterfield>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know I know we're kind of running up against it, but uh last last thing. So tomorrow we've got the uh um varsity B or Bronco alumni golf tournament. So uh just like to see uh tomorrow. when Joel mentioned Taylor Tharp, I think Tharp's group is by far and away the favorites tomorrow. Um Cedars. Uh, I don't even think those guys have to cheat. That's I think Tharp, Tharp and uh, Mike Altieri, uh, uh, Coach yeah. of the Year in Boise, I believe, um, and uh, probably Vinny is probably with them. I, th- those guys are actually yeah. pretty good. So, awesome. yeah. But we, we should probably have a little side bet on us three right here on our group. Yeah, <laughs> that sounds good. Who, who are you guys playing with in uh, your groups? Playing with uh, Donnie Heck, Greg Swenson, and uh, Adam Ingroff. I got the great Quinn Skellen on my team, former legend punter, Dalton Lins, and uh, Brad Bedell. So it should be a great, should be That's a great combo. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I got a, feel like you're gonna go ahead. I got a, I got Kekala, DJ, and B Hawk. So kind of the newbies. Nice. Uh, 
but it'd be sweet. Feel like uh, we might be in trouble. So we'll, we'll have a little side bet on that. We'll, we'll settle up afterwards. Perfect. Right. I'm looking forward to it. But awesome. dude, Joel, and Joel, we you can make sure it. that I know. Well, Joel can make sure that I lose that bet by just not bringing my clubs since they're in his truck right now. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got you. Yeah, there you go. Go. See, I'm still fixing yeah. stuff, right? I still got it. So it's all good. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. But. Listen. No, but uh, closing up, man, Joel is one of the guys one that guys. Uh, keeps teams like this together. And uh, it's pretty sweet to see him falling out in the community now. We didn't even get to really touch on all the cool stuff that, you, that you're doing out now and just continuing. Get to a shout out for Joel. and Yeah. Happy Teriyaki. Like everybody, go by, get some happy teriyaki. Yeah. Uh, that obviously a great thing, but also I, I think probably everybody in this community has now seen the uh, Shields promo you guys did, Joel's marketing company that he's working with, uh, flying the drone right through Shields or Shields. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, how many hits does that have now, Joel? Yeah, it's crazy. It's like 90,000 views or something like that. So um Pretty cool. Awesome facility. Like Shields is a great spot, but uh, luckily we got a talented team of, of people on the marketing agency. So that's going really well. But honestly, um, just the connections and the people I was able to meet while I was at Boise State is what made that all possible. And so it's been really cool to kind of see that flourish as I've gotten out of football. And, you know, it's been it's been cool to see all the former players, former coaches, be able to kind of connect with those guys again and then, and then support the current guys that are doing it, you know, because someone's doing the job that I had. And so they're in there saving it every day, you know, Charlotte yeah. and Keaton and Lou and yeah. that they're whole awesome. crew, they're in there, they're in there saving the day every day. And so um, yeah. it's not like when I step away, it's, it's got to keep going. So it's, it's a machine, right? It just keeps on moving next man up. And so they're carrying the load now and, uh, I'm definitely rooting for them to be successful this year, but appreciate you guys having me on too. This was this was a lot of fun, and it was cool to tell some stories. So I appreciate you guys. So probably go for two hours. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, Riley's got to got to knock out some HR stuff. Yeah, yeah. but it's it good. We might have to do a part two during uh during the season when we start this yeah. Going back. Yeah, we'll Absolutely. tell the good. We'll tell the good stories then. We'll tell the, un oh, yeah. the untold. The untold. There's yeah. a lot. There's plenty yeah, of you can plenty. write a book, girl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you guys. All right. Thanks, everybody. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks again, Joel. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, guys.